right, we're here with Mario Tenuta of the University of Manitoba, standing in front of a, a pile of what was dairy manure. Now it's uh, it's turning into uh, into compost. Mario, just as a basic question for for farmers, why what's the value in uh, in spending the time and energy turning uh, turning manure into into compost? Well, turning manure into compost provides more options to growers how to handle with the manure waste but also other waste that they may have on their farm or that may potentially down the road come to the farm. You may have waste bales, waste feed, feed bales, uh, bedding straw material that may be uh, served its day or is a bit uh, uh, during storage, been, um, uh, the quality is degraded. And then there's also the opportunities for taking in municipal wastes, uh, waste from um, yard trimmings, organic waste from kitchens and so forth. So we're not at that stage in terms of with, with, with farmers accepting those materials, but it gives, gives options. And in particularly, there could be options where, depending on some types of manures, particular manures that uh, we would stockpile and it could be stinky, or have odors to them, well, composting is a wonderful way of getting rid of odors pretty fast in the material. That's one thing. The other thing about composting that growers like is that it can be a volume reduction mechanism in terms of getting rid of about two-thirds of the volume of the material that would have to be land applied. How about from a, a nutrient perspective when applied to the soil, what's the difference? Well, from a nutrient standpoint, there, there's quite a bit of difference because the compost is a stabilized material, which is basically producing the humus that we find in the soil, that black material, the organic matter in soil, it's stabilized and then the nutrients are in that form so it become a, a long-term slow release source of nutrients and they're stabilized. So let's take for example a, a dry chicken manure or poultry manure of some sort. If that gets wet uh, it will uh, become odorous and the lobalization of ammonia. Well maybe producers cannot stockpile the material in a dry, dry form and so being able to compost it is one way of keeping the nitrogen and phosphorus in a uh, stabilized form rather than, than for nitrogen in particular going up to the, to the atmosphere. So it gives them an option. Okay. If they have a liquid manure, it becomes more challenging to compost because there's just so much sheer volume of water. It's challenging to add enough carbon to the straw or, or waste feed to, to that material. But the liquid material can be part of a mixture of, of material uh, starting. Or you could put it through a machine that would uh, dehydrate it in some form or, or remove moisture from it? Yeah, so our research at the University of Manitoba has ex exactly examined that in terms of taking pig slurry, putting it through a centrifuge, separating out the solids from the pig slurry, which in effect takes a lot of the phosphorus, puts it into that, residing in that solid material. Then that solid material, if it re-wets or even if it stays in a, in a pile, it, it was well, the nitrogen will be lost during, during um, the, the piling of it. So if we compost it, we can keep. Uh, we think we can keep the nitrogen in the pile. We can definitely keep. The, uh, sorry, in the compost, and we can also keep the phosphorus present in the in the compost. Uh, and if we have um, other material like bedding material, uh, then it's, it's a great way of um, stabilizing, mixing waste materials together, reducing the volume that has to be land applied. Mm -hmm. The compost process itself is largely driven or related to the the carbon versus nitrogen ratio you talked about how it's the, the pasta versus the meatball yeah kinda. right the pasta and the meatball right. so the pasta is the carbon so we want we want lots of carbon to start off with and then we want the protein or the nitrogen which would be the meat and so to start off with we want about a 30 to 1 carbon to nitrogen ratio the finished product of a true composting of a true compost product will be about 10 to 1 12 to 1 okay so it narrows down as the co2 as the carbon is lost to the atmosphere through microbial respiration so it comes down to just to actually carbon nitrogen ratio is very similar to the organic matter that's present in soil and that's what makes it ideal for for putting into our garden or onto a field it's a stabilized form of nitrogen the nitrogen is not going to be quick release and uh, probably more important in terms of nutrients is the phosphorus it's just a wonderful available plant plant available source of phosphorus and if we're relying on manure or not manure sorry I'll switch again and because of it being a good source of phosphorus, we really can't rely on compost for, to meet all the, the nitrogen needs. We'll, we'll have too much phosphorus if, if we do that. Exactly. If, we, if we're applying the, the compost to meet the nitrogen needs of the crop, we're going to be adding way too much phosphorus. So basically, 
we could add the compost to meet the, the phosphorus requirements. We'll get some benefit in terms of nitrogen. We'll get lots of benefit in terms of other nutrients as well, potassium and, and metals, calcium, magnesium. So we'll get other benefits as well in there. So it's not just about the phosphorus or the, or the nitrogen. So it's the other nutrients as well. But yes, so it's really good for people to realize that no, they should not be managing the compost addition rates to meet the nitrogen needs of the crop. Mm -hmm. And finally, then, why do you why do you see potential for this, or, or where uh, where do you see this going down the road for for farmers in Canada? Yeah, where do, where, where do we see compost moving towards? Well, I think there's several fronts, and they're probably very across Canada in terms of what the local opportunities are. So. Where we are in Manitoba, I see uh, opportunities with uh, separation of solids from from pig slurry. I see that one as one option. I see uh, another option in terms of um, manures such as uh, uh, dairy manure. That would be, um, or it can often be uh, pretty high in moisture content. It becomes, uh, uh, for stockpiling, it becomes pretty, there's a lot of leachate and then it could be odor from that so I can see composting be an effective means of um, of uh, reducing those that problem with, with leachate and with uh, with odor uh, I can see in terms of particular organic crop production is do good true composting and let it mature and cure very well for a long period of time good likelihood you get uh, organic certification to put on your land so I see that as being a very very uh, good opportunity for, for growers across Canada to do organic production. And then um, I see in particularly where we have um, biofuel production, ethanol production, or, or even with um, municipal digesters in terms of san municipal uh, uh, sanitation systems, mm -hmm. the digestate that they're producing, that that can be um, uh, composted rather than going into a landfill. Sometimes that material doesn't want people don't want it to go straight directly to land. They say it has some odor problems and issues like that. So, so composting can fit in many ways. And particularly with growers, one of the key things is that this idea of stabilizing nutrients so they don't lose it during stockpiling, but also the, the volume reduction. So if they can just reduce their volume, that means it's, it's less work to to be applying. And in many ways, it's a lot easier to incorporate into the soil and add it to the soil as well as a compost rather than a raw manure. Yeah. And down, I guess this might be even further down the road, or, or I think this is just in the very early stages, but this idea of nutrients that farmers have supplied to cities, the organic or the any compostable material potentially coming back to, to the farm and, and providing value to the soil? I, I don't think that's uh, potential. I think that's a must-be. <laughs> I think that's, a, that's an absolute must-be. Uh, we have to think about the, our own lives and as humans in terms of um, the recycling of the nutrients. So we're part of a massive amount of nutrient movement uh, globally, locally and globally. And so we have to think about uh, our place in that and putting things to landfill is just not going to cut it. And having nutrients build up in the city so that it can, it can run off and storm, storm water to the river is just not going to cut it anymore. So we farmers spend a lot of money applying nutrients, getting nutrients onto their land so they can produce good crops to feed people. And so uh, there's a need there to replenish those nutrients. So so one thing that I think is inevitable is that we have to tighten up our recycling of getting them, those nutrients out of their urban areas back onto the land. And I think composting is, is a means of that. One of the great things about composting is that the fact that it will go through sterilization processes in terms of with, with high temperature. And if we want to always ensure safety of materials, be animal or human type materials, waste materials going on to the land, so the composting as uh, part of that safety net. Alright, well thanks for your time Mario. You're welcome.